Hi, this is Deb Watson, and this morning I'm going to show you how to do some loose roses, wet on wet. I'm starting with very wet paper, and I'm putting permanent rose straight from the tube on, and you can see it's running like mad. I left my paper a little wetter than you probably want it, just so that you could see that this is not a disaster. Working wet on wet seems to scare a lot of people, but you'll end up with such nice results. Just take the plunge. The right side of the paper has a little less water and it's still spreading. For my roses, I don't want to dot the roses in and have lots of individual roses, but I'm creating some masses of flowers. And then I'll have a few individual roses. When the red spreads wildly, it's going to just blend into the green that'll go around the flowers. So it's not the disaster that you might think it is. So here I have three masses of flowers going horizontally across the paper and a few extras. Next, I'm gonna start with my very light green. I mixed my blue with my yellow to create my own greens, but you can use any green you like. You don't want to paint the green in and fill in every little area between the flowers. You just want to dot some in on the still damp paper. It's important to keep your paper evenly damp. My studio is in the basement, so it stays damp probably a little longer than other people's might. But if you have issues, you can use a misting spray bottle to add water if your paper tries to dry unevenly. I'm going to make a darker green. That means I'm using more blue and less yellow and I'll paint in some darker green. And some of the darker green will go on top of the light green. Some will go beside it. It's almost random. Now, while my paper is still wet, I'm going to dot in a little more of the permanent rose right from the tube, so I have a few darker areas in the middle of these flowers. I'm not trying to draw roses. I'm just giving variations in the value. We'll have light pink and dark pink. At this point, I'm using my misting spray bottle to keep it evenly damp. Dotting in color, it might be a good idea to use a small brush so it doesn't spread out and overwhelm your painting. And if it's too dry, give it a spray. For this painting, to add a little life and movement, I dip my brush in my light blue and spatter it onto the painting by tapping the brush on my finger. That's just kind of a fun way to make it a little more lively. Once it dries, it may not be exactly what you planned, but you can still work with it. Here I have one area that dried and I'm re-wetting it so I can soften up the dark edges and pulling that color around to create some more of a rose shape. So this mass of roses may have two or three roses, some light, some dark. To finish your rose painting, you may want to put a darker color underneath the roses or some of the leaves. 
by putting the dark color in and then using a brush with clean water to soften the edges coming out. That gives you a feeling of depth. You can also draw leaves, dark leaves, on the light areas. Or you can draw around leaves and paint behind them. This is negative painting, and that might be a little hard to understand. That's why a demonstration is always nice. So from the wild bit of red that we started with, now these shapes are turning into beautiful roses. And the rich glowing color comes from working wet on wet. So I think you should give it a try. Study what makes roses look like roses. Just a few brush strokes going the right direction. A few shapes. And you'll end up with a beautiful painting. You don't have to just use dark green. You could also dot a little bit of your red right back into that dark green for more variety. <laughs> 